the Dan Wesson Specialist Commander. Let's check it out. The Dan Wesson Company was started by Daniel B. Wesson, who is the great-grandson to Daniel B. Wesson of Smith & Wesson. Dan worked at the Smith & Wesson factory for a number of years, up till 1968, and once it was bought out uh, from the family, uh, he started his own business in 1969, producing really high-quality, very accurate revolvers. One of the big problems with making revolvers, especially at that time, was the big three, which was Ruger, Colt, and Smith & Wesson. Because of that, sales were limited. And some of the unorthodox things that they were doing with the revolvers as well. Uh, they changed that, started making some really cool, in fact, very modular uh, revolvers that would have interchangeable barrels. And the Dan Wesson revolver line was popular, but not really popular enough to keep the business going uh, and to replace equipment. So it was bought out a few years later after Dan Wesson died and they began to produce uh, 1911s and limited revolvers as well. But in 2005, CZ purchased Dan Wesson and began to make really high quality 1911s. And in fact, some of the best 1911s, production 1911s uh, in the country. One of the things that really sets them apart is not only are these very precision made, there's a lot of parts that go in here to be hand fit. And where this is not a custom 1911, it is a, one of the best production 1911s made. There's a lot of talk about the old 1911 not being viable in today's world, and yet it's lasted since 1911, and honestly guys, it's as popular today as it ever has been. You know, the preferences of some people to where this is really, you know, something that is combat ready, that's self-defense, that's a matter of preference. And so while I don't typically carry a 1911 for self-defense, there are many times that I do. And there's one thing about the 1911 is the pointability and just the legendary uh, feel for this pistol. Uh, served all the way from World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and has even served in current combative actions going on around the world, especially with special forces. Uh, this is a very pointable gun. It's one of the guns that I learned to shoot on. Not this specialist, obviously, but definitely the old government and the older commander, even the officer's model from Colt. Just the 1911 design uh, passes through timelines. Now, there are definitely a lot of advantages to the new modern firearms, but there's nothing like a nice, very high-quality 1911, especially at the range. It was an elegant weapon for a more civilized age. Uh, oh, that's the lightsaber. <laughs> and World War I and World War II weren't more civilized. <laughs> but first thing we're going to do is make sure the gun is unloaded. Drop the magazine. Check the chamber and it's empty. Now this is the Dan Wesson Specialist. Um, and this is their new Commander version. They've had the standard 5-inch uh, version out for a number of years. But this is a new offering from Dan Wesson. Now it does come in 45 caliber. It comes in 9mm. I have a number of 45s and I really wanted a really high quality 9mm 1911. This is a 9mm version, uh, but all the things that we'll talk about are going to apply to the 45 ACP as well. Uh, the magazines for the 9mm are 10 plus 1. Uh, for the 45, it's 8 plus 1. Now with double stack magazines that are from 15 to up to 19 rounds, you know, there's a lot of firepower with that and that's something that you need to consider as far as what you want to do or feel comfortable with for self-defense. But that still doesn't mean that the 1911 is not a still very viable self-defense option. The magazines are stainless steel, they have a nice bumper on the end and uh, just really quality made. 
Now there's no doubt that Dan Wesson makes some really high quality 1911s. Kind of in that mid-range, not the budget or just the production 1911s, but with some advanced features. Well, one of the big things that you notice right up front with this pistol is just the fit and finish. I mean, it's flawless. Uh, everything is just very tight. Uh, you pick up the gun, you rack the slide, you can tell that it's just a, a well-oiled machine, pretty much. Uh, one of the things they do, though, is this is not any kind of casting. They uh, These are forged uh, stainless steel parts, and then they're milled. One thing that you'll notice is the ball-in mill right here that kind of trims this out, makes it really soft. Of course, you have your Picatinny rail at the front, you know, where you put lights and lasers on there. But the finish itself is a matte, kind of a bead blast finish. So uh, it gives it a very soft appearance. VZ grips, which are G10. Uh, these are the Operator 2s. Very aggressive, yet uh, feels good in the hand. As you can see right here, it's got a little uh, divot for you to be able to reach your magazine release. You have a flat mainspring housing that's checkered, 25 lines per inch. Uh, the front strap also checkered. Uh, very well done. And it's not too aggressive. I mean, it gives you a really good feel, uh, but it's not sharp in the hand. Uh, then we have our high-ride beaver tail with this memory notch right here. Uh, makes it, get, allows you to really get up on the grip of the pistol. Uh, the trigger guard also has been relief cut right here, again, to make it easier to get that hand up closer to the bore, which that's one of the things the 1911s are known for, is to have a low bore axis. One thing, though, that I love about 1911s is just how thin they are. I mean, they're just very pointable. The balance is excellent. And, um, you know, I did a lot of um, IPSC shooting years ago, a lot of competitive shooting, and I used a 1911. In fact, I used a Colt Gold Cup, and uh, that gun was just really accurate. And I'll tell you guys, 1911s, if you get out and shoot them, they're just such a pleasure to shoot. Uh, yeah, it's old school, but yet there's a lot of modern... Uh, techniques that go into making these even better than they've ever been. Here you have your safety which is extended and it is ambidextrous. Uh, you have a skeletonized hammer uh, which is a commander style hammer. Uh, then we have our slide stop which actually has been relieved and shortened some so you can put laser grips on here. Here are the serrations. They're straight up and down but yet they're pretty aggressive. Uh, the only markings on the pistol are right here. Specialist. Uh, there's no Dan Wesson marking on the slide or anything. It's a very minimalist approach. Uh, makes it really uh, very sleek looking. Of course, you do have Dan Wesson Firearms, Norwich, New York. Which again, these are made in the U.S. Uh, you can look right, see the match for the match barrel. Uh, and one of the things about that, it's been fitted, hand fitted, to the barrel bushing. Which this is where your accuracy is so important, is the bushing uh, relation to the barrel, keeping it very steady when you're firing. And you can see how tight the bushing is mated to that barrel. Uh, that takes hand fitting and to make it really just right, uh, concentric and fitting where it'll just aid in accuracy. Uh, which this has also been crowned, you can see where the barrel's been crowned. And it is a four and a quarter inch barrel. Uh, the checkering here on your recoil plug and then you'll notice that the serrations all along the top of the slide, they're just very fine. And that's an expensive process, but it's been well done. Which gets us to our sights. We have some Trigicon sights. Uh, these are night sights, and you have the single dot, which are the Heine straight eight. Uh, and then we have a little ledge here for one-handed reloads, which I really like that on a pistol. Notice where the slide stop comes through, it's countersunk. Uh, you can see just the detail, the attention to detail on this firearm. I mean, the fit and the finish is impeccable. Guys, I'm telling you, if you're really looking for a very high quality firearm that's not just a production piece, because these parts, the trigger, things like that have been fitted. And fitting leads to smooth action and with reliability. It just makes the gun more pleasurable to shoot. It does have a magazine well, which allows for these single stack magazines to go in really smooth, which is a nice feature, but it's not too big and bulky. But being an all steel pistol, this weighs 41.4 ounces, so it's a pretty heavy firearm. 1911s are known for their superb trigger. Uh, we're gonna pull the hammer back. The gun has been safety checked. There's a little take up just right there. 
and then a really short, crisp snap, very smooth. So take up, and that's it. Reset, that's it. I mean, <laughs> there's not any reset. <laughs> that is very sweet. As far as trigger pull weight, four pounds, 8.7 ounces. Four pounds, 5.5 .5 ounces. Four pounds, 7.5 ounces. Uh, this is with my Lyman trigger gauge and that's very consistent. And I want to thank Freedom Munitions for sponsoring the ammo. Uh, not only their new manufactured 115 grain, but also the 135 grain Pro Match. And uh, we're gonna run this ammo through and just see how she goes. But I have a feeling it's gonna be a good range day. Honestly, I felt like I was going to come down to the range and go, yep, that's a 1911. But, man, first time I racked around into that chamber. Uh, it's so tight yet smooth. It's like precision. <laughs> you know, I've had some 1911s that were a little bit sloppy. Still shot pretty good. But this, no malfunctions. Um, it just fed. I, well, I won't say no malfunctions because on the first few magazines, the slide didn't hold open. Um, and so after about three, I began to wonder if it was going to hold open. But then it just started holding open every time after that. Uh, so uh, maybe just need to work out its bugs. This gun is brand new and uh, straight from CZ. So um, just a well-oiled machine and machine it is. Now I wanted to check out the grippability with bare hands and at first I was shooting just with gloves. I had to go back and take my gloves off and shoot a few rounds just to see how it was functioning. Uh, but you know it just is so pointable. You know the light rail at the front gives it a little more heft at the front of the muzzle and then you know attaching your um, light on there would actually help as well. Of course the recoil being nine millimeter was super mild. Um, you know, it just shot great and very easy to stay on target. Uh, with 45, I don't really expect it to be a lot worse because to me, 1911s are made for 45. Uh, I think this just makes it a nice caveat to put it in nine, which is the most popular caliber in the world. Um, you know, I did when I first posted some pictures on Instagram and mentioned this was nine, a lot of guys were like, eh, eh. well, it does come in 45, so get 45. But uh, all the same features, the same weight, the same control, it's all the same. So whether you get 45 or 9, uh, you know, will be both the same, except for you will get more recoil with a 45 ACP. The magazines, just inserted, they drop free. In fact, they just fall free. <laughs> uh, very easy. Um, controls the uh, safety. It was very positive. You can hear it, you can feel it, which makes it nice. Really, the gun overall, I just really enjoyed it. Uh, you can tell the precision's there, and I think Dan Weston has hit another home run with one of their 1911s. We're going to disassemble the firearm. We're going to remove the magazine, make sure that the gun is unloaded, and it is. Uh, they do provide a barrel bushing wrench uh, to go right here on the barrel bushing, and that's the first part we need to look at. Depressing your recoil spring plug, take your barrel bushing and turn it and what I do is bring it down just a little bit right there, recess, and then release that plug. Now you can do that with the barrel bushing wrench, uh, but I'll, this is the way I've always done it. And then take the uh, bushing and just turn it to the other side, and it stops about right there. Now as we bring down, and you'll see how I've got it down just a little bit from the barrel, we can release the bushing. Next, you want to bring your slide back, and in the first little crescent notch, you want to line it up right over the end of your slide stop or slide release. This is our slide release coming through on the other side. I'm going to take a small little punch, push it, just because it's recessed right there, it's a little difficult to get to, 
and then that pops out the slide release. And you'll notice this little small notch and then you have your slide release notch here. So it's the real small one and then this pulls right out. Then you can let your barrel just go forward. Now we'll take our recoil spring and guide rod out. Uh, this is not a full length guide rod, this is more of a traditional. And then drop the link right there on your barrel and then pull it straight out. And now the gun is field stripped. There's a little bit more of a complicated process, but guys, I'm telling you, once you get used to it, it's not really that big a deal. But you can see the match barrel and the quality of the lugs, the way this thing is cut. It's just really well done. And again, this is a match barrel. It is four and a quarter inches. The interior of the slide is impeccable. Um, there's still factory lube here. Uh, just a very beautifully machined piece. Here you can see the internals of the frame. Uh, just very well done. Guys, I'll have to admit that when I got the gun, I was very impressed. Uh, but after looking into the internals, I am seriously impressed. Uh, the attention to detail is just exceptional. And now we're going to reassemble. So we take our slide, take in, drop in our barrel. Go ahead and take that little link and lift it up. You can set your guide rod in and then put your spring through. Now we're going to add it to our frame. Now one thing you want to pay attention to is this little link right here. Your slide stop actually fits through that hole. So when we're sliding it on here, we're going to make sure that we line up that hole with that link. So when we put it in, it'll go in right. We'll go ahead and slide. Man, that thing just slides so nice. Sometimes you have to push down a little bit on the barrel to get the slide to make sure it's in battery like that. Now once you get this little hole lined up with the square and make sure that the link is orientated in the right position, I take my slide stop and put it in just to make sure it's in there. This is one place where you can scratch the frame. So be careful because of this detent and the little plug. So as we bring it up, we want to depress that little plunger. There we go, snaps right in. Just making sure that you get that little detent in and it'll pop in. Now we're going to go forward with the slide. Take your bushing and you'll notice the little notch and that fits down just like this. Now again, a little bit of relief off your barrel crown really helps. And now we can take and turn our bushing. You can push it around through your spring, it's not going to hurt it. All the way to 9 o'clock. And again you'll notice I have a little bit of relief there. Then we're going to push it forward, get our little plug, depress it, and then pull over your bushing. And then make sure it fits just like that. Uh, guys, you mess with this enough and it becomes second nature. Um, honestly, I haven't broken down a 1911 in a while, uh, but I really love it. I used to do a lot of different things to my pistol, fine-tuning and adding different parts. Um, it's a whole nother world when you get into the 1911. As far as price for the specialist, uh, the manufacturer suggested retail price is $1,701. Uh, if you get the black version, which is a black Cerakote version, uh, it runs about $2,000. I guess that's because of the extra. This is just regular stainless. So for under $1,500, getting a really precision-made firearm. Now, on the lower end of the spectrum, of course, you have your Rock Island Armories, which are very reasonable. Still very good quality guns. Uh, but then you have your Ruger, your Sig, some of those guns. Uh, those are cast, the, the receivers are, and it's more of a production. There's more hand fitting that goes into the Dan Wesson. Uh, not quite your Nighthawk or your uh, Wilson Combat, which those can run into the multi-thousand dollars. I know Wilson has one for about five grand. So the 1911 has a wide range. You just have to decide what you're looking for. But for a really high quality precision piece, I think that Dan Wesson is doing it right. Now, as far as pros and cons of the pistol, uh, the quality's there, uh, very precision, flawless uh, finish. The hand fitting is excellent. Um, you know, Dan Weston is known for its quality. And the price is a plus because, you know, for, the, for what you're getting, it's a great deal. 
But now as far as cons go, you know, for the average guy, $1,500 is expensive. Um, you know, you can buy <laughs> three Glocks for that, which that'll be in the comments. But as far as your 1911 and a good quality, um, you know, $1,500 is not that bad. And But again, it is a con for a lot of people, or it's a hurdle. As far as the weight of the gun, it's pretty heavy compared to a lot of the offerings, especially the polymer striker fired pistols. Um, this gun is is coming in pretty heavy at 41 ounces. But and two, you know, with the 1911 controls compared to the simplicity of the striker fire, you know, that is a con as far as if you're trying to decide between this and a, and a polymer frame pistol. They do make some aluminum frame alloy 1911s and even polymer frames. So, you know, it has a lot to do with what you're going to use it for. If you're carrying it as a concealed carry, this would be very heavy. The cons really are centered around if you want a 1911 steel frame pistol or if you're looking for, you know, a lightweight polymer frame pistol. So, I don't really consider that a con in a sense, but yet it is what it is. You have limited round capacity for a 9mm pistol with only uh, 10 rounds, and of course with 45 it's only 8 rounds, compared to a lot of the offerings out there with much higher capacity. And so that's also going to be, you know, factored in to making a decision to buy this pistol. But if you're looking for a 1911 steel frame pistol, uh, to be honest with you, there is no con to this. It's just a really well-made, well-oiled, again, I'll say it again, machine. And you can go to danwestonfirearms.com uh, to see all the different models that they make and all the different configurations. Uh, government, all the way down to the compact models. And I want to thank Dan Wesson for sending the specialist for the T&E review. Um, I do have a chance to buy it, so I guess I'm going to have to pick out three pistols to sell so I can afford it. <laughs> but after that accuracy, I think it's going to be well worth it. Again, it was just a slick, smooth... Uh, great experience with the Dan Wesson. So if you're looking for a 1911, I would definitely take a look at Dan Wesson. Uh, good high quality semi-production pistols. Uh, a lot of production to keep the price down and yet hand fitting to make it just feel like a machine, which it is. It's a smile machine. <laughs> I think old Daniel B. Wesson would be proud. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. It's an elegant weapon for a more. You know, that's a matter of objective. That's a matter of conjure. <laughs> 1917 rounds. The. Hey, come on. Now, there's no doubt that Smith. Um, there we go. Uh, with the light rail, uh, you know, it just gives it a little more bulk at the front. Then, if you put a light on there. Oops. Well. You got this, baby.